Hello everyone. This video is about the life cycle assessment of plastic bottle. Before we begin, let us look what we are going to go through in this video. First is the introduction of plastic bottle, second is the life cycle of plastic bottle, followed by the impacts of plastic bottle. The last part is some recommended mitigation measures to reduce the impacts of plastic bottles. Without further ado, let us begin with the introduction. A plastic bottle is a bottle constructed from high-density or low-density plastic. Plastic bottles are typically used to store liquids such as water, soft drinks, motor oil, cooking oil, medicine, shampoo, milk, and ink. This video focuses more on PET, polyethylene terephthalate, bottle which are commonly used for bottled water and soft drinks. Here is some history about plastic bottle. Plastic was invented in the 19th century and was originally used to replace common materials such as ivory, rubber, and shellac. Plastic bottles were first used commercially in 1947 but remained relatively expensive until the early 1950s when high-density polyethylene was introduced. Some may ask, why is plastic bottle so popular? Here is the reason. Plastic bottles quickly became popular with both manufacturers and customers because of their light away in nature, relatively low production, and transportation costs compared to glass bottles. However, the biggest advantage plastic bottles have over their glass counterparts is their superior resistance to breakage, in both production and transportation. Except for wine and beer, the food industry has almost completely replaced glass bottles with plastic bottles. The life cycle of plastic bottle contains five processes which are raw material extraction, manufacturing, distribution, usage, and end of life cycle. We will go through all processes one by one. First process is raw material extraction. Plastics are made from raw materials like natural gas or oil which are refined into ethane and propane. About 8% to 10% of our total oil supply goes to making plastic. It is estimated that about 12 million barrels of oil a year are used in making the plastic bags used in the US. Ethane and propane are then treated with heat in a process called cracking which turns them into ethylene and propylene. These materials are combined together to create different polymers. The second process is plastic bottle manufacturing process. How are plastic bottles made? Bottles are usually formed through blow molding, although there are several techniques, including reheat and blow molding extrusion blow molding, and reciprocating blow molding. The most common technique is reheat and blow molding. Reheat and blow molding bottles. The first stage of a typical two-step reheat and blow machine, RBM, bottle manufacturing process is injection molding. Plastic pellets are plasticized in the barrel of an injection molding machine where the plastic is melted by heat and the shearing action of a feed screw. The plastic is then injected into multiple cavity molds where it assumes the shape of long, thin tubes. These tubes, called prisons, usually include the formed necks and threads that will be used to cap the bottles that are yet to come. Bed prisons, or preforms, are easily shipped to bottling facilities as they are much more compact than fully formed bottles. During the reheat process, the prisons are loaded into a feeder and run through an unscrambler, which orients the prisons for feeding into the blow molding machine. The prisons are heated by passing by quartz heaters and then enter the mold. Here, a thin steel rod, called a mandrel, slides into the neck of the prison where it fills the prison with highly pressurized air, and stretch blow molding begins. As a result of the pressurized air, heat, and pressure, the prison is blown and stretched into the mold axially and radially, where it assumes a bottle shape. This process produces what is called a biaxially oriented bottle which provides a CO2 barrier ideal for containing carbonated beverages. The mold must be cooled relatively quickly, so that, that the newly formed component is set properly. There are several cooling methods, both direct and indirect, that can effectively cool the mold and the plastic. Water can be coursed through pipes surrounding the mold, which indirectly cools the mold and plastic. Direct methods include using pressurized air or carbon dioxide directly on the mold and plastic. Once the bottle has cooled and set, it is ready to be removed from the mold. If a continuous molding process has been used, the bottles will need to be separated by trimming the plastic in between them. If a non-continuous process has been used, sometimes excess plastic can seep through the mold during manufacturing and will require trimming. After removing the bottle from the mold and removing excess plastic, the plastic bottles are ready for transportation or filling. After manufacturing of the bottles, comes distribution. 
The bottles are then shipped to a bottling plant where they're filled and packaged. From the bottling plant, the bottles are shipped to the stores where you purchase them. Consumers purchase the bottled water or soft drinks from the stores. For the usage, plastic bottles can be used to fill in water or soft drinks. Plastic bottles are very light, convenient, and easy to carry. They can be thrown into the trash can once they are finished. The last process is the end of life cycle. When a plastic bottle is finished, it usually will be thrown into the trash bin. When plastic water bottles are collected for recycling, they are taken to a materials recovery facility. The plastic will be shredded into small pieces, sorted, and washed. The small pieces are heated to create small resin to make more plastic material. For next section, we will talk about the impacts of plastic bottles. During raw material extraction, various pathways such as air, water, and soil have been found to transmit pollutants associated with oil drilling operations, which in turn can influence community health. Oil spill may happen during extraction of oil. Oil spill effects on environments and habitats can be catastrophic, they can kill plants and animals, disturb salinity, pH levels, pollute air, water and more. During manufacturing, the tiny pellets produced by the facilities often spill into waterways to be eaten by birds and fish. In addition to the pellets, crackers pollute our rivers and oceans with nasty chemicals that can be toxic to aquatic animals and accumulate in the food chain. Air pollution from petrochemical facilities can contribute to health problems in neighboring communities, asthma, lung cancer, brain and organ damage, vomiting, diarrhea and cardiovascular diseases. At the end of life cycle, when plastic bottles are not recycled, they are sent to landfill where they can take up to 1,000 years to decompose. Moreover, products made from recycled bottles, such as clothing, often end up in landfills as they cannot be recycled with today's infrastructure. The most visible impacts of plastic debris are the ingestion, suffocation and entanglement of hundreds of marine species. Marine wildlife such as seabirds, whales, fish and turtles mistake plastic waste for prey, most then die of starvation as their stomachs become filled with plastic. Up to 12.7 million tons of plastic enters the oceans every year. The equivalent of a truckload of plastic enters the oceans every minute. There are 5 trillion pieces of plastic in our oceans, enough to circle the Earth over 400 times. The next section provides some mitigation measure for the impacts of plastic bottle. Recycle after use. Recycling the bottle can reuse them as materials and reduce waste pollution. Use biodegradable plastic. Biodegradable plastics are plastics that can be decomposed by the action of living organisms, usually microbes, into water, carbon dioxide, and biomass. Use reusable bottle. Use water bottle that are reusable to reduce the production of waste. Thank you for listening, that would be all.